Hey everyone, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining. So as I already said, we're gonna talk about different ways to bring your uh, data into one day with Microsoft Fabric, and we're gonna show you a bunch of cool demos and also how to integrate with AI and everything. Um, so with that, let's get started. So my name is Nicola De Boer. I'm a principal product manager on the One Lake and Shortcuts team, and I have Hari. I'm Harini. I'm a software engineer in One Lake team. Cool. So uh, what is Microsoft Fabric? Uh, so if you're not familiar with Microsoft Fabric yet, it's an all-in-one SaaS solution for all your data analytics needs. So it's one unified platform where your data analysts, data engineers, data scientists all can work together inside a single product. So we have like data factory for data ingestion, analytics for your Spark and uh, SQL workloads as well as uh, databases and even real-time analytics if you have real-time data. And then of course, Power BI, so you can build like beautiful reports and dashboards on top of the data that you ingested and prepared using all these different uh, workloads. And so as part of Fabric, we have the Fabric platform, which uh, OneLake is a big part of. So OneLake is the data storage that powers all of Fabric. Uh, so if you data stored in OneLake, you can use all these different workloads. You don't have to copy or move data between these different workloads. You can all just work on top of the same data. And of course, all of this is integrated with AI and like security and governance comes with it as well. Cool, let's talk one late. One Lake is at the heart of Fabric, and One Lake is this unified data storage that brings all your siloed data uh, from different data sources into One Lake. So as you can see on the screen, like we have many different multi-cloud uh, data sources that can virtualize into One Lake. By virtualization, I mean you do not copy the data from your data source into One Lake, but rather it is virtualized into One Lake. So um, if you have your data in, let's say, in S3 or like on-prem, having this client tooling talk to each of these data sources and uh, uh, access the data or manage the governance of the data, like the or back permissions on uh, folders or, or all of your data gets really complex at scale. So what you can do is you can bring all of this data into one lake as virtualized, and you can have central governance within one lake. You can set up your role-based access control on your uh, directories, or you can set up on your tables. At the bottom left, you can also see that there are databases. So using fabric mirroring, you can bring, uh, uh, you can near real time replicate this, your databases data into one lake as well. So once all of your data is there in one lake, you can access um, one lake data through this ADLS Gen 2 compatible API. Because uh, the access is through ADLS Gen 2, a uh, compatible API. You can now access it through different toolings, like um, you can access this same data in notebooks and run Spark SQL queries, or you can access it in um, AI and ML uh, applications, like you can do it in Azure AI Foundry, or uh, use Copilot Studio to access this data. Also, your uh, business users can use this same data in Excel or M365 Copilot. And, uh, one lake brings um, not just directories and uh, files, but one lake has tables as a first class resource. By that, what we mean is like, if you have um, uh, tables bringing into one lake, one lake recognizes these tables inherently, and uh, it also recognizes the formats of these tables. So if you're bringing tables from Snowflake, if you, so if you have a Snowflake account and you're writing tables to one lake, we automatically virtualize that into Delta format. So without copying the data, it's all metadata conversion. So you can read all of your Snowflake tables in one lake or uh, any uh, engine that can read Iceberg or Delta can work on one lake. So shortcuts. Shortcuts is the core piece of technology that powers one lake. Uh, this is a symbolic link. It's a Windows equivalent of symbolic link. This is how we bring all your like you know S3 or GCP data into one lake. Uh, once the data comes to one lake through these shortcuts. You can set up all the RBAC rules, and you can also set up fine-grained access on your tables, like uh, row-level security or column-level security on your tables, and all of the fabric engines enforce these same very rules within one lake. Yeah. Cool. Um, so probably during this conference, you've heard a lot about AI, and especially also the Azure AI Foundry. So, um, 
When we talk about Microsoft Fabric and Azure AI Foundry, um, the Fabric is really for the data pros, and of course, like the AI Foundry has all the AI pro developers in there. And so, really, one leg can be like the glue between these two, the two different products. That if you already have your data in one leg and you already have analytic workloads in Fabric, it is super easy then to also use that same data and link it to AI Foundry. So, no data movement, data copy needed. And then you can start using AI Foundry to build your uh, data agents, any AI models that you want to use on top of your own data that is all in one lake and you don't have to deal with like connecting to all these different sources again unifying it everything it can all just go through one lake together uh, so with that we're going to go into a couple of different demos so first of all I just want to show you how you can bring one lake data um, how you can bring data into one lake through shortcuts so I'm going to show you a quick demo of data that I have in Snowflake. So as you can see here, I am in Snowflake and I have a table here uh, with inventory data. This data is linked to, as an external table to, table to an S3 bucket. So uh, now that I wanna have this data, I wanna connect that to my one lake. So I hop over to um, Microsoft Fabric and I have a lake house here that I wanna bring data into. As you can see, there's no data into it yet. So it's super easy with shortcuts to bring data into Fabric. So all I have to do is say, click create new shortcuts. And now I have a couple of options of data sources I can connect to. So as you can see here, we have Google Cloud Storage, uh, Dataverse, and also Amazon S3. So in this case, I'm gonna connect to Amazon S3 to connect to my Snowflake iceberg tables. Um, so I'm just picking a connection for connectivity. And then I'm gonna just find like the iceberg table that I have connected uh, here to. So it's in here and I can see here now that I have that same Contoso inventory table that just so just saw the snowflake, I have it here. I can see this is iceberg metadata. Everything in Fabric works with Delta tables. And so behind the scenes, we're gonna virtualize this um, iceberg metadata into Delta metadata. So I'm just simply gonna connect to this and I'm gonna create the shortcuts. And as you can see, it will automatically create like this Delta table for me. I don't have to do anything and I can like directly start using it in Fabric. All the engines will work on top of it. So I can start using uh, Spark Notebooks, Power BI directly on top of this iceberg data. So with that, uh, there was the first demo. We're gonna do a quick demo now on um, if I have data in one lake, how can I actually connect that to AI Foundry? So we just released this week, and it was part of the keynote announcements, the uh, connectivity to connect to Blob shortcuts. So in this case, now I'm gonna create a new shortcut and it can now connect to Azure Blob Storage. Um, Azure Blob Storage is a major source for unstructured data and one of the leading sources for uh, AI as well. So now through shortcuts, I can just easily connect to it. It's the same process as we've just been before. So just creating a connection and now I can also bring in unstructured data into Fabric. So in this case, I have a couple of transcripts. They're just text files uh, that I can bring in. And this will all end up in my file section um, in the lake house. So now I wanna start building a agent on top of this unstructured data. So for that, I'm gonna switch over to AI Foundry and I'm gonna connect my data through one leg. So here I'm in AI Foundry today, and there's a tab here for data and indexes where I can bring an, all my data from one lake inside um, AI Foundry. So from here, I'm just gonna say click new data, and it's very easy just to connect to the storage URL. So as you can see here, one lake is supported, and all I have to do is just quickly go to my properties. There's the ABFS path here. I just copy it. I put it into the URL and then I can just connect to it. And it's using Entra ID as my authentication method to actually connect uh, between Foundry and uh, Fabric. So that's how you connect to it. And then I'm gonna quickly show you uh, a couple of pre-recorded demos to show you uh, how now I can use this data inside the Foundry to build my agent. So now that I've connected this data, I'm gonna build this agent. It's very easy, probably seen it throughout the conference uh, to create like this agent. I'm just gonna name it. And now all I have to do to use my one leg data is to just like, go to the knowledge tab. I can click on add and now I can use my index data that I use from one leg and I can just easily add that uh, to my agent. So it's already here. I just have to pick from the drop down, give it a name, say how I wanna use my semantic search uh, and then my agent is ready to be used. So once I've connected all of this, um, I'm gonna move over and now I'm gonna start chatting with my data. So what you can see here now is that uh, I've added the fabric 
uh, knowledge to it. And now you can just start asking questions about the data that it just brought into that lake house with the structured and the unstructured data. And it will return me the results with like what products I can use. So this is really like a very, very short demo of how you can use both um, Fabric and AI Foundry together. And there was no copying over of data, just all uh, linking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> cool. So with that, cool. Um, you've seen how uh, we can virtualize the data from source to one lake um, in all of these demos. Now we're going to show like how to transform this data while you're bringing this data. Sometimes you just want, you have a bunch of CSV files or a bunch of JS JSON files. Um, you, you can transform them while you're bringing them into one lake. So that's the demo we'll be doing now. So I'm going to go create a simple table shortcut here. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, I should have been switching. Give me one second. Okay, here you go. So I have my Condeso HR team that has all their data in CSV files. They are not, uh, they don't know how to create Delta tables. They do not know how to create iceberg tables. They just want their data to come into Fabric and then start using Fabric uh, uh, tools like Power BI or uh, notebooks. So here I have uh, my workspace um, and I have my lake house in Contoso HR team and I have my employee data. And now I'm going to create a shortcut. Um, and my data is all in one lake. So in the data hub, when I'm creating the shortcut, it shows you all the uh, data that you have access to. So here I am, um, I'm going to pick from my lake house, which is under the file section. And it also shows you the sensitivity label on each of this data. It gets automatically categorized. So here I'm going to pick from my files and I'm going, I can pick all of my tables together. I don't have to do one uh, set of data at a time. I can do a bulk uh, transform of all of my data. And I click on next. Here it ought, one lake automatically detects that it's CSV formatted data and it shows the applicable transformations for you. In this case, it's saying, hey, you have a CSV to Delta available, do you want to do that? And you might choose to not do it and you can do a revert changes and you can just go and virtualize the data. But here I'm going to do the transform, We're going ahead and clicking next. And choose a final summary and then I'm going to create these tables. So as you can see, one lake has started to create these tables from the CSV files. Uh, it will take about like 30 seconds to a minute to finish up. Meanwhile, I'm going to show you the one lake explorer, um, how you can see like all the data within the Windows uh, desktop. So we have the one lake explorer here and it, sh it gives you access. It shows all the workspaces that you have access to in Fabric. And my workspace is Contoso build 2025 and my lake house is Contoso HR team. As you can see in my files, I have all these employee data and all of these. Now I go back to tables section of this and you can see in real time how one lake would be creating some of these. It's still syncing up, but yeah. That's okay, just move on. Yeah, as you can see, the tables got created. And if you look at this, there is like a delta log and all the different transformations that happened on the employees table. Um, it would be the same in attendance table. So going back here, and when we refresh, you can see all the tables uh, that were created here. You can also check uh, what has gone around in the background processing. Like you can manage the shortcut and see that there were a bunch of jobs that were run for you without setting up any scheduler, without setting up any change detection on your uh, data. You can see that the one lake has processed um, your CSV data into uh, Delta files and it shows the log of like what, what all got processed. And let's say if you want to change your data, like if you, if, if you want to add more data or if you want to delete uh, one of your existing CSV files, I can just go and uh, go back to my file section
I'm just going to rename. This is going to be a delete and a recreation of a employee four table. This was an amazing demo. I'm so sorry. We have to keep moving. Um, if you want to see the rest of the demo, you guys can follow up um, afterwards. But uh, any last words, last uh, couple right. seconds, go for it. Yeah, definitely. So um, definitely try out Fabric. It's just one click away. And if you have any questions or want to learn more, we're over there at the booth as well. So we can answer any questions there. Thank you so much.